Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the first of two box and whiskers charts. Now, in this first one, we're going to do is spend a little bit of time discovering and talking about what box and whiskers charts are. So we'll spend a little bit more time on this particular video. But don't worry, you'll see just as much of the actual visual in this one as you will in the next one. Now, this really is an easy way, using the box and whiskers charts, is an easy way of examining one or more sets of data graphically. The chart may be a little confusing at first to read, but it does have some advantages. It takes up much less space, and it makes it much easier to look at and compare a distribution of values that you might have. So it lets you see a couple things. We can see things like outliers, we can see clusters of data points, we can see different volumes of data points as well in different series that we have. And they, all these different lines and boxes have meaning. So let's talk a little bit about the meaning of the, whisk, the whiskers and the boxes and things like that. The whiskers really show us the spread of all of the data. The ends of the whiskers, the top end and the bottom end, show the upper and lower extremes of values. Okay, So in the example that we see here, where we see different types of classes, we see English, math, physics, and these different types of classes, physics, for example, has a lower extreme, or a min, of 46. Okay, So you can do something like assume these are points or a number of answers they got correct on a test. Not necessarily a percentage, but number of incorrect answers, maybe, perhaps. All right, so. We got a min of 46, that's the lower extreme. The upper extreme here is 63. So the maximum value here is 63. And if we wanted to set, get uh, perhaps a range to see what the range of values we have here, we would take the difference between the upper extreme and the lower extreme, and we would see that the range of values that we have is 17. We're able to get some statistical information in here pretty quickly. Now the center line, the one that's in the middle of the box, uh, or typically in the middle of the box, sometimes it kind of varies a little bit, but the center line in the box represents the median, which tells you the half, that basically half the values are less than this line, and the other half of the values are higher than this line. So you can tell kind of where the distribution of values lie by that median. That median shows you where the top half and lower half of the values are. Okay, So in between that is that uh, middle point. All right, now the beginning and the end of the box. Focus in on the box here for a moment. The beginning and the end of the box represent the median of the lower and the upper halves of the value. So really, it's, a, it's taking the uh, bottom half of the, the regular median and getting you a median of the median almost here. So it's kind of taking the, the, the split here, split the, the box and whiskers chart in half, and then giving me an upper and a lower median return back. Okay, So that's kind of what we're seeing here. We can see a 60 and a 62 are our median that we see for the lower half, and then the upper half is the 62 value is our median for the upper half. So it's really breaking it up into quarters. We're, we're essentially breaking up the set of values into quarters here, and uh, there's a purpose behind that we're going to talk about here in just a moment. Now, the beginning and the end of the box represents the median, like we said, but essentially we're sp splitting it into four sections, or they call them quartiles. And you're going to see here, yeah, I'm actually going to show that in the slides here, so let me bring that in the slides. But you can see the first quartile is going to be the bottom half. So from the very bottom part of the whisker all the way to the beginning of the bottom part of the box is our quartile 1. That's what Q1 stands for here. Quartile 2 is going to be from the beginning of the box to the median. Quartile 3 is going to be from the median to the top half of the box. And then quartile 4 is going to be from the top of the box to the top whisker. So it really does allow you to see a distribution of values. It allows you to see several different types of variations of statistics on your data. And so what we're going to do next is really show you how this works when it comes to working with it inside of Power BI. Now, this particular chart has three different types of box and whisker charts that it supports. We're going to show you a couple of them, not necessarily all of them for this. And you can also see here who developed it. If you're really curious, you can follow him and uh, take a look at some of the other ones you've developed. All right, so let's uh, go quick and make a quick look here. If we're going to start by going to show you where you can go download this visual, and then we'll show you how to use it right after. All right, so our first step is to go to the Power BI Custom Visual Gallery. You'll go to it by going to visuals.powerbi.com, and then from here, you're going to scroll down until you find the box and whisker chart. And we're looking for specifically the one, oh, I went a little bit too far here, the one developed by Jan Peter. All right, so we're going to go ahead and select that box and whisker chart here for this example. The next example, we'll take a look at the other one. But we're going to go ahead and download this visual, and you can also download some samples as well if you'd like to take a look at it. Okay? All right, so I've already downloaded this. I'm not going to bother downloading it a second time. I'm going to flip over to the Power BI desktop now, however. So I'm going to flip over to the Power BI desktop. And what we're going to be looking at here in this example is some uh, data that's really automotive data. So we're going to be looking at things like miles per gallon for different vehicle types. 
And we're going to bring that in and compare two different uh, types of vendors of uh, vehicles and see which of them have a different distribution and really take a look at the distribution of miles per gallon for these different makes and models of cars. All right, so your first step here that I'd like you to do is go ahead and get the data that we're going to use for this example, which you can find by going underneath the Get Data section here. So I'll select Get Data, and I'm going to choose Excel. Now, the file that we're going to be using, you can download from my example below here in the video, or you can actually uh, look in the course files if you purchase the course. All right, so we're going to go into the Data section here, and I'm going to bring in this file here called Vehicle MPG, and go ahead and select that. Power BI is going to connect to that Excel file and then launch open the Navigator pane where I can select the spreadsheet here that we want to use. This one here called MPG is the one I want. And you can see a sampling of what the data looks like. We have Toyota and Honda vehicles in here with their miles per gallon. I'm going to go ahead and just hit load and bring this into our Power BI data model. All right, give that a second to go ahead and pull in. And then once we do, we're going to go import in our Box and Whiskers uh, custom visual. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go over to the visualization pane here and tell it that we want to import from file and tell it to import a custom visual. Go ahead and hit import again, just letting you know you're importing from a third party. And we're gonna go ahead and find from my location where I saved the custom visual, the box and whisker. All right, so I'll select that custom visual, hit open, and it'll bring it into my visualization pane here now, like so. Now, if we wanna use this visual, by the way, I'll go ahead and bring this in here as a table so you can see what the data looks like here first before we go jumping into uh, viewing it in the box and whisker. So let me go ahead and bring this in, make the text a little bit larger so you can see it like so, and I'll stick that over here so we can use that as a reference later. Now I would like to go ahead and bring this into the, the visuals as a, as a box and whisker, so I'm going to select the box and whisker visual. I'll go ahead and make this a little larger, okay? And then what we're going to do is we have three different types of fields that we can place in here. You have a category, which basically is going to give you a different category of uh, the box and whisker, okay? So meaning we're going to have two box and whiskers show up here, one for Honda, one for Toyota. That's the category that we're working with here. The sampling will, will place in there each instance of our value here, which in our case is going to be the model, so that'll be our sampling. And then the values that we're trying to analyze here is MPG. So really, you can just kind of click your way down each of these. I can click on Make, Model, and MPG, and we should get a box and whisker that's built out for us automatically. You're looking at on the left-hand side, you're seeing Honda. On the right-hand side, you're seeing Toyota. But let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. Now, the great news is you can actually hover above any one of these box and whiskers, either one here, and you'll actually see all the statistics being returned back here. You can see that we have a sampling of uh, seven samples of Honda, seven samples of Toyota, okay? We can see what the men and the max are. So the men and the max is represented by the top of the whisker and the bottom of the whisker, okay? We're also seeing the median, which is the middle line that we see towards the middle of the box, okay? And then we're seeing the quartile one and quartile three. That's telling you the uh, bottom section here between the whisker and the beginning of the box and then the, above the top uh, line of the box and the top whisker. That's quartile three is actually gonna be right here. This is quartile four. So it's kind of giving you an idea of what those are and where the locations are. It's also telling you what the average is. Now, if you're wondering what relevance the average has here, that's actually the dot. So the little dot that you see here, that's represented by the average. Remember, median and average are two different things. Median being the middle point of the data and average being kind of taking a total average of all the results that we have. All right, so that's a view of how you can use the box and whisker. Let's take a look at some of the ways you can customize this if you'd like. To customize the box and whisker, we can go over to the Format Paintbrush on the right-hand side, and you'll see there's a couple different options that we have available to us. One, you can turn on data labels, so check that out. You can turn on the data labels that we were looking at just a moment ago. So data labels you can turn on. You can also increase the text size of those data labels if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and leave them off because it uh, has the tooltip there anyways. So data labels are a nice feature you can turn on. The privacy section doesn't really have anything here. This is just the version of the tool, so nothing really to do there. The grid lines you might want to turn on or off, so you can turn off the grid lines if you don't want to see grid lines on here. That might be fine because you have, again, the, the tool tip here to kind of give you an idea of what's being shown. If you like the grid lines, however, you can turn in the, on the thickness. If you want to see a thicker grid line in there, you can do that. You can also change the color of the grid line, so if you don't like the color, you want to switch it up, you can change that there. And then you have the minor grid lines as well. So you can have the ability there turned off by default, but you can turn on the minor grid lines if you want. You can see it has even more points of data in here, or any more reference points, I should say. Uh, just like you can with the uh, major uh, grid lines, you can also change the color of the minor grid line if you want. All right, I'm going to reset this to default. I think the grid lines were fine as they were just a moment ago, so I'll leave that alone. You can also change like the text that you see on the different axes. So right now I'm play playing with the Y axis and I'm actually changing the text size. So you can see it increases the text size on the left here on my 
graph to be able to read it a little bit larger. And I'll do the same on the x-axis as well, so you'll be able to see Honda and Toyota a little bit larger if I go ahead and bump up the text size on that. All right, good deal. That looks pretty good. I like that. Uh, you'll find underneath the data colors, if you want, you can actually change the data colors that are being used for each box and whisker here. So if I wanted to, I can change Honda to, uh, I don't know, something like red. I can change Toyota to something like uh, yellow if I wanted to, just for the sake of changing the colors. You can, you maybe you want to align them better with their brands. You can certainly do that if you wanted. I'll leave those colors as is. And then finally, that last section here to cover is the chart options. Now, the chart options have a few things that are kind of interesting here. Let me make this a little larger to read here. Um, you can affect things like the chart margin, so the uh, size or the amount of uh, space that it's taking up. Right now, it's set to medium. Notice what happens when I change it to large. It actually shrinks it down a little bit, so it uh, makes it have a larger margin. You can also give it a small margin, which means it's going to take up a larger space. So that's up to you. I kind of like the small, uh, uh, the large margin, I mean, to narrow down the chart a little bit. Okay, it's, it's representing the same amount of data. It's just kind of giving it a larger margin, taking up less space here. So I can shrink this down a little bit more even if I wanted to. All right, you can also turn on or off outliers. So right now, outliers are turned off. If I turn them on, in this case, it actually doesn't detect any outliers. If it did detect outliers, it would show them in another colored dot here. And those colored dots would be represented by the same color that you see here. So I would have a red or a gold uh, dot representing kind of any outliers it might have detected. I'm going to leave that off. Uh, the last thing here is the chart type. Now, this is kind of interesting. You can change it to three different types of chart types, the default being a min-max box and whisker, which we're looking at now. But you can also change it to a few others. Just to highlight these, I'll, I'll highlight this 1.5 here. This one actually is kind of interesting because what it does for you is it takes a look at the quartile 3 value, so the quartile 3 value being 34, and it multiplies it by 1.5 to kind of give you a different way of distributing the data. So the actual, the the top line here, the, the top part of the whisker, is represented by something different than what I showed in the slides earlier. Remember earlier in the slides I show, showed you and told you that this is actually represented by the max or the upper value? That's different here in this scenario. There's different types of box and whiskers you can explore with and play with, and they give you a couple options here to kind of, to kind of play with them and, and take a look at each of them. All right, I'm going to leave it with the, the default here, the max min one that we kind of described earlier in the slide. I'll leave it as this, and that'll be it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got a good idea of how the Box and Whiskers works and got an idea of how this particular visual works. And what we'll do next time is we'll actually take a look at the other Box and Whisker that was developed as well. Thanks a lot.